Hello, in this video I want to talk about a little bit more of the advanced functions of automated animations, uh, namely delving into a lot of the options that are available with each different type of animation section. Um, I'm just going to be using the on token menu to demonstrate this. Um, just pretty much using the dagger, so you'll see here when I attack with this dagger, I have it set to in this section on the on token menu for dagger it's going to be playing the cure wounds animation so you'll notice in this you have quite a few options this varies between menu menu to menu and there are a lot of similar ones in between them uh, if you want a quick reference click the uh, little i button next to it and there's gonna be a little menu that pops up giving you a quick rundown of what each option does uh, it's great for quick references even i forget what some of these do sometimes um, elevation, uh, that, that's a big one. Previously, I think there was a checkbox for below tokens. Uh, sequencer in Foundry version 9, you could tell it to play either above or below tokens. Foundry 10 changed and did away with a lot of the, the canvas layers that, that Sequencer was using. Uh, now they have an entirely new elevation system. Sequencer is piggybacked off that, so instead of telling it to play below or above tokens, you can tell it to play at an elevation. Um, quick reference here, so I have elevation zero, that's essentially always going to play below a token. So if I change that to one, you see it plays above the token now. That's because the token's elevation is set to zero. So if we want to say he's flying this alkalite, and we'll set him to 25, that elevation one isn't going to do anything. You can set it to 24 and it's still going to play below that token. 25 would be on the same level. Uh, let's see what here. Can we tell it a Z index? Possibly not. No. Nope. So the same elevation will still play below the token. Set it to one higher. And there you have it. Uh, by default, if, if elevation is probably, I believe, always set at just 1,000 for all effects within AA. That's, and you can change that as you wish. Uh, you have your repeat and delay columns, pretty self-explanatory. You can tell it to repeat X number of times, one being it's only playing once. Maybe, maybe slight misnomer you're telling, this is the field telling you, hey, this is how many times I want you to play the animation. Whereas if we change it to five, you see it's going to play back to back here. Hard to see with this animation, but it's played five of them. Spread half a second apart. Uh, several menus you can set to be persistent. Uh, persistent animations disregard any repeater delays because when you play it, it plays it and it will just sit there and repeat continuously until you manually delete it or if you have some sort of automation module that will delete that for you. Uh, I don't want to dig too far into uh, all of these options. I want to talk about a, a few specific ones um, mask, of course, is a nice one if you want to mask it to a given object. Since I'm playing this on this token, I just want to mask it directly to that token. It's kind of a fun. You can play with that with templates and have a lot of neat, neat effects. So let's talk scaling. Um, most sections, I, 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 I didn't have this option in previous automated animations versions. Uh, this gives you the option to change it strictly between a, a simple scaling of the effect versus having a set radius of the effect. Um, there is some internal scaling, which basically takes an animation and makes it slightly larger than the token, and then you can play with the scaling from there. If you want more control, you can set it to radius and tell it a radius on the, on the canvas to play. One and a half meaning one and a half grid squares. So you see it comes out, uh, this should be three, three grid, grid squares in diameter, which it was, so stretching Pretty much the three grid squares there. Uh, you can also account for the token width, so it'll act more of an emanation, so it's going to account for that one grid square token size on here, and you see that animation gets a little larger. And if you had a larger token, we'll update that, and you see it still even gets even larger. So let's shrink that back down. Uh, fade in, fade out's new. Uh, let's just give a, a brief fade in, fade out to help smooth smooth effects. Anchor is a nice one. Uh, it's going to be 0 0.5 by default. However, if you want to change the anchor, 
of the effect on where it plays. You can scale this in and out. And if you want to set the XY, simply separate that with a comma and put the two anchors. So this should play, yeah, middle left. Whereas if you did this XY, that's going to play middle top and just move it around. Having just a single number in there basically says, hey, this is the X and Y anchor at the same time. Or you can define them individually. Uh, now, the delay and wait here, this is new. Um, previously, the way automated animations ran all of its all of its sequences is that they all use delay, essentially. So basically, when you chained a bunch of these effects with the source animation, the primary, secondary, which used to be explosions, and the target animations, you'd have to set that delay basically starting from a zero point and staggering each of them. They now have the option to set each individually to be either delay or wait. What changing this to wait does, if I, if I set this, well, let me just give you a hard example here. We're going to do a secondary animation. Let's just do a generic explosion. And I'm going to offset these anchors, uh, 0, 5, 0, 8, and we'll do 0, 8, 0, 5 on this one. So I have delay set with a 0, and there's no delay here, so this is going to play those at the same time. If you choose wait in this primary section before it goes on to the secondary animation, ah, sorry, I had to cough. What this is telling it is it's going to wait for this first animation to finish playing before it moves on to the second animation. So now you'll see the Cure Wounds animation play, wait for it to finish, and then that explosion animation will commence. Now when this is set to wait, you can actually use negative numbers in here to tell it, hey, I want, I want the next one to start playing 1,000 milliseconds before the next one ends. So now you see you're going to stagger them here, and the explosion will go off before that one is completely finished. And we can even move that out even further just to demonstrate that a little bit better. Change it to 2,500 seconds. That's a long animation, and boom. Each of these sections has the ability to set the delay and wait, with the exception of target animations. This is always at the very end of the sequence, so there's only delays. There's no use for wait because there's nothing coming after that. So you can really set these up in a very large different... Uh, what's the best way to put that? You can set one animation up probably several dozen different ways depending on how you set the weights and delays. Uh, the way it was before, the only section that had the weight on it was the source animation. And any defaults will align with what it was before, just not to confuse anybody. But you can go in here and change that source token to a delay. So if you wanted this to do that, like you could literally play each of these all at the same time. Do another target animation. Uh, let's just go... Oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want a spell? No. Let's go lightning. Static electricity. And I'm going to offset all these just so to make sure you can see them all play at the same time like I'm intending. So we have a source animation, delay, I don't want another cure wounds, I've got that already. Let's do a liquid blob. And I'm going to set that at an anchor of zero. So all of these are set with delay. So they will essentially all play at the same time. So you saw the cure wounds. You saw the explosion, static animation, or static electricity is kind of right up here. And then the blob is still playing. That must be a long animation. Whereas alternatively, if you go through like I was just demonstrating, let's change those all to wait. Set that back to zero. And do that and You'll see this, that blob, it's going to sit there and play out its entire animation before Cure Wounds, which is set as the primary anim animation plays. 
That'll play before the explosion, and then you, finally the static electricity will play. So once again, with all of the options, like I said, the best thing to do, um, these are all, all, these all mimic options that you can use when you're building, say, a custom sequence macro. Uh, so you can check either this quick reference here, you can check the sequencer wiki, they have really good explanations. Um, and just play around with them, uh, make up some stuff, it should be a lot of fun. Um, I guess one other thing I could say is like that options menu info button. Uh, it will automatically you know, change the page over here just to go to the current section that you're on. Uh, as far as other advanced options, outside of all the different options you can choose there, or menus were upgraded to have an effects section. Uh, I guess I can demonstrate that real quick. Uh, what do we have here? Spirit Guardians. Let's, uh, we should have Spirit Guardians here. Make sure I don't have it customized. Good to go. So, let's do just the standard one we have set here, which, which should be a yellow-blue animation. Yep, and that does pop up. And mind you, that these are all automatically persistent effects, so you have to manually delete them, or have a module that automates everything to remove it. Uh, let's show off some options. So if you want to apply a color tint to an aura effect, Come in here. Use the color picker. Uh, let's give it a let's give it a green. Let's give it a blue overlay. Leave the saturate at zero, and you will see here when it plays now. It should have a blue tint applied to the animation. Uh, you can give it a breathing effect. Uh, set the the scaling from and to, and the duration of that breathing effect. So if we play the spirit guardians here. You see it'll give that nice uh, kind of breathe in, breathe out effect. And you can tweak that to where it's subtle, or if you want to go crazy, you can change it to, let's go one half to one and a half. That might just be a little bit out of hand, but let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah you can really give it a ping pong effect there. Uh, and you can pair these all together as well, so if you wanted to do that, and if you want to add an alpha effect. What the alpha effect does is it fades the opacity out from a value to a value. So we're going from, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't fade the opacity out necessarily. It fades the, the alpha applied to the effect. So we're going from negative 0.5 to 0.5. Let's match that all up. Yeah, close him out. Pop that in. And now you see when it fades in, see it's kind of fading out. It gets more brilliant when it gets to the to the crescendo of the effect. So that, that's uh, well, that's not all of them. There's obviously a lot of stuff you can do with this. Uh, play around with it. Uh, if you think I might be missing some customization features, let me know. Uh, otherwise, have fun. Thank you.